I need to also. I just lost I you need guys. To apologize to Spirit. <laughs> I need to apologize to Spirit. You know, uh, oh you know, I follow the dictates of Brother Lawrence. How many of you ever read about <laughs> Brother Lawrence? Because it's direct communication all the time with source energy, which we call God. Well, I need to apologize to source energy before I begin this talk of what I said to source energy to God last night before retiring. Because so many people called me this week and said, I'm sorry, Angel, we know you like a crowd. I can't be there Sunday because I'm going to be gone. And so I had a little conversation with Spirit, and I said this. Listen, we had an agreement. <laughs> do you ever talk to Spirit like that? I do, all the time. We had an agreement, a covenant, covenant that said, I will glorify you, and I will worship you if need be, and talk about you, but you provide the clientele, the people. <laughs> and I find out that I'm going to have four or five people there Sunday, so get with it. <laughs> well, I apologize, you did it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, if I act weird, it's because I'm a source energy person, and it's God expressing itself to me as me. Anyway, this is an exciting month, and it's a celebration of month, and uh, I'm going to do a talk before my talk because I thought, you know, it's appropriate that we talk about what's happening this uh, on Christmas Day, and it's appropriate that I start there, even though I didn't want to start there, because our, our themes are, what, release, wisdom, and celebration, so I wanted to start with release, and here I'm starting with celebration, <laughs> forgive me, but anyway, uh, uh, what we're celebrating this month is our own unique awareness of who and what we are. And many of you don't know what this means that when we say the Christ consciousness, the birth of the Christ. What's being celebrated this, this month, and particularly on the Christmas Day, is the birth of, of, of Jesus the Christ. In New Thought, we look at that birth as the birth of this Christ conscious within ourselves, and that's what we're celebrating. And this magnificent teacher called Jesus uh, the Christ, the word Christ uh, is uh, like getting the doctorate uh, in those days. It's the anointed one. And then he said, as, our, as a first new thought teacher in, on the planet, I feel, he taught all of us that we are all anointed ones. So today we're going to puzzleize the idea of Christ consciousness because most people don't understand what that really means anyway. And we're going to call it the awakened consciousness. And I'm doing this especially for our dear friend Maggie and her deep shop. Uh, <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about the awakened consciousness. Well, when we look at this idea of the themes, release, wisdom, and celebration, what does it all mean? What is all that? Well, it all goes together, and those are the steps we must take if we really want to experience our true nature in this human form. If I want to experience my true nature, be it and live it, then I must follow these steps, and one of them is release, and we'll talk about what that means. Uh, another is wisdom, and the other is celebration. And so what today is all about is putting those three together and saying, okay, how can I be and experience my true nature? What is my true nature? Love, harmony, and abundance, do you agree? That's who we really are. And so today, what this is all about is let's look at those steps necessary to, uh, to experience in our life form that which we are. And uh, when I'm uh, confronted with something, and I go off the deep end, or I get nervous, I get uh, doubtful and irritated and all that, we need to I ask myself, Angelo, are you experiencing your true nature in this moment? Are you experiencing love? And are you experiencing wholeness and abundance? And then if the answer is no, that I'm not connected and not expressing and experiencing my, my nature, my true nature, the nature of the divine. That nature and our nature is one and the same. Well, uh, the scripture tells us that the light on the hill cannot be hid. Now that's profound. And when we in New Thought and here at the PLC look at that, what it is, it shows our relationship. What is the relationship that I have with being human? Of experiencing uh, being human. What is that relationship? That relationship didn't say, it didn't say, the light on the hill is dilled or dimmed when we experience a human behavior. No, 
The light on the hill cannot be hid. And what this is all about is how we react to what's going on in, in, on the planet. We're here to experience it all. I'm here to experience all of it. The pebbles on the beach, the, the obstacles, all that. Because I'm a creative, spiritual, infinite being here to experience the whole enchilada of the human experience. I'm on vacation here, guys. I am a spiritual being. I decided to show up today to experience what it means to be a human being. That's what it's all about. And so I have to accept my, my power of what I really am. The light on the hill cannot be hid. Um, and, and we can go on with this and say this. What is our biggest obstacle in that regard? My biggest obstacle <laughs> as an eternal spiritual being occupying this body is how do I function in a body that's temporal? A body that may wear out. A body that may, over a period of time, not be able to carry me as a soul wherever I want to go. So my relationship to that, that's a big challenge for me. What do I have to do to this physical being to nurture it, to make sure it's functioning 100%? What do I need to do to establish a quality of life where I can enjoy my experience as an eternal being occupying this body, experiencing the human drama? That's what this is all about. It's all about how do I get there? How do I get to that higher level of consciousness that provides me with those tools to be all that I can be in the moment? And that's what awakened consciousness is all about. We also can coin it the Christ consciousness, but it's the awakening. We are awakening. Whew, I'm done with my talk, that's it. <laughs> Somebody said, okay. Angela, you will remember that uh, we have the blessing this Blessing ceremony, so cut it short. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm going to continue. So, uh, we know the word, and I talked about this at Sandy's class. She invited me. I'm sorry, <laughs> took over. Uh, she invited me to speak at her class, uh, and I saw a class here, and I was lovely. And she said, "I'm not to experience cause me." Like, okay, so what? So anyway, uh, we mentioned the word enabling, which is kind of interesting when you get into this belief system. All of, the, all of the words that we sometimes negate in the human experience by psychologists and all these folks and scientists are negative. The word enable is kind of interesting. It came to mind yesterday during the, when I was with these guys. We must be enablers. If we're not enablers in our own lives, who's going to enable us to reach that higher level of consciousness? This awakened consciousness. We know that I've been called an enabler for other things. Uh, Angela, you're providing these people this stuff, so therefore you're becoming an enabler. You're allowing that person to continue on the bad track. How many of you have been called an enabler? Well, many of us have. But when it comes to spirituality, and standing I had a discussion on this, there's different levels of enabling. The spiritual level is this. If I don't care enough about myself, if I'm not worried about, or not worried about, if I'm not concerned about the quality of life I'm experiencing in this moment, then I'm not enabling, I'm not giving myself permission, I'm not making it possible, I'm not making it easy, I'm not enabling myself to be that which I am. In that moment, what I am is a spiritual, eternal being occupying this temporal body, trying to adjust to that, trying to adjust to a society that where my effect, the things that I create, wants to take control over my life. The economy, right? can you imagine that? And, and you know, when we get to that level of experience, we get to that awakened consciousness, we look back on it, and most of us are, are there, aren't we pretty much, PLC? Here, here. When we look back on it, we say, my God, it was ridiculous. How did I let my car breaking down affect me to where I wanted to jump off a bridge? <laughs> Why did I allow this relationship? Mary Smots told me I was a no good SOP. Why do I allow that to affect me? I'm a spiritual being occupying a body. I'm infinite. I am one with the, the CEO of the universe itself. Why am I doing this? You see? And that's what we go through. And I'm sorry, I'm on my tangent now. But this is <laughs> and it's not my fault. It's God's fault. <laughs> So today we're going to go through, and I have to do it with you. I'm going to have to go 
through the steps, but it's what are the steps that we need to use to actually arrive at that awakened consciousness? Well, Maggie went to India. Well, most of us aren't going to go to India and spend 28 days meditating to get to.